Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to be talking about financial statements and try and give you an understanding of the two most important aspects to it. This is a two-part video. In this first video, we're going to be talking about balance sheets and in the next video, we're going to talk about profit and loss. So join me as we go and explain exactly what financial statements are. Hello, my name is Anne Patrick. I'm a chartered accountant, a certified UK trainer from Intuit QuickBooks with Fancy New Logo. That QuickBooks chap on the internet, also head of account here at Boffix. Now, in today's video, we're talking about financial statements, and in particular, the bit, two areas that are the most important to you. This first video, we're going to be talking about balance sheets. All right then, so let's talk first of all about the financial statements. Now, in front of me here is just a really, really standard one, but the bits that we're gonna be interested in more than anything at this point in time is gonna be this statement of financial position just here. And on this one, it's page number seven. Statement of financial position is actually the balance sheet, and the balance sheet is probably something you're more aware of in terms of the naming of it. But the statement of financial position, balance sheet, they both relate to the same things, it's just we've had to call it statement of financial position lately. Now what is the statement of financial position? The key part here is the date at the top there. If you read what it says there, it says the name of the company, in this case QBO Case Studies, statement of financial position or balance sheet to what you may be able to recognize it as, as at the 31st of March 2020. Now in this case, that's the end of the financial period for these set of accounts. And that date, the 31st of March 2020, is so vitally important to what the financial statements relate to. Now in this case, what we're saying is we're going to draw a line down the middle of the dates of the 31st of March 2020 and then the 1st of April 2020. And the idea is that if we were to take and stop everything for a business as at that date, what is the financial position? What is the balance sheet going to look like? What is, in this case, the statement of financial position going to show? In other words, if you were going to stop at that point, how much cash have your business actually got? Now, in some of these instances, a lot of these cash numbers or a lot of the numbers here aren't actual realistic cash. And actually, the whole statement of financial position is designed to be in a place where we can see what the likelihood is that you're going to actually achieve that cash. If you think about it, when you look at anything to do with business, the cash that's in your bank, well, that's cash, isn't it? That's There's no argument for that. If you've got $100, $100, pounds, or if you've got £5,000 and $500, it doesn't really matter. It's going to be correct as at what amount of money is in there. So the cash position is really easy. What gets more complicated, though, are all the other aspects that affect it how much money you've still got to receive from your customers, how much you've still got to pay your suppliers, how much assets do you have that if you needed to, you could sell them and generate more cash. There's all these questions and that's what the financial statement is all about. So this is a really simple one we're gonna start off with and it should give you some indication of actually what's happening here. So in this case, we have 50 pounds in our cash at bank and in hand. That is how much cash we had at the 31st of March, 2020. So if we have 50 pounds in there, what does that relate to? Well, that relates to how much money we could pass over in theory to our shareholders. And in this case, that means that we have then 50 pounds available for us to pass to our shareholders in the forms of dividends or however else you want to enumerate your shareholders. That also means you've got 50 pound worth of investment money. You can spend that 50 pound on whatever you need. So in the most simplistic form, all the financial statements are telling me at this point is that I have 50 pound in my cash at bank in hand, and then I have 50 pound available to pass over to my shareholders. And you'll notice here that this is line. That line there basically indicates that Everything above the line is how much money you have available, and it comes to what's called your net assets. So again, in this case, just that 50 pounds in your bank account. And then below the line is what you're gonna do with it. So in this case, the, the idea would be you've got 50 pound in your shareholders' funds, and in theory, if I wanted to go and pay out a dividend, I'd have a maximum of 50 pound available, and I have, thankfully, 50 pound in my bank to be able to pay that over. That's in the simplistic and simple way of looking at it. Let's make things a little bit more complicated though. So now if I go down into this one and I move to my statement of financial position, this time I'm at the 31st of March 2019, things get a little bit more complicated. 
You see, in this area here, what you'll find is there's far more items in here that we need to worry about. That first section at the top there, tangible fixed assets. Well, a key part to this to understand what that actually means is there's a note section next to it. That note gives you a breakdown of what that is. Now, tangible fixed asset, fixed assets in total, they are basically going to be assets that last longer than one year. When we move on to the profit and loss account, we're looking at costs that relate in a particular year or a particular period of your financial statements. A tangible asset is something that should last more than one year. Therefore, you want the cost or the benefit of it to be spread over multiple years. For example, this camera that I'm recording this video on now, well, I'd expect it to last me more than one year. So if I'm doing a set of accounts for how I produce these videos and how I actually do the YouTube channel, then realistically, I want this camera spread over how long I think it's going to last for so the cost of that asset is shown there. That's effectively what a fixed asset is. It's about saying how much of big bulky items you paid for and how long they are. And the fact that in a statement of financial position, we can also see the previous year as well means that we can make an assessment of how that's going. So straight away from these two numbers here, last year we had more fixed assets available with £15,000 worth. And last year and this year, we now only have 11. So that tells me that we haven't invested as much in our fixed assets. We've probably paired back a little bit or we invested heavily in the previous year and we're just making the most of it in this year. Now, the reason we showed the fixed assets on the balance sheet is so there's an idea or an assumption that if we needed to, we could sell those assets and the fixed assets here should really try as best we can to represent the value of what those assets are. And it's all about that position that maybe one day we need to liquidate our business. Maybe it one, one day we need to just sell everything we have to be able to pay some form of creditor that we have. So we owe some money to someone else. And it's about how easy is it for us to actually sell it. We fixed assets are going to be one of the ones that are very difficult to realize that value, to turn it into cash because you've got to find a buyer, then you've got to finally sell it, they've got to then pay the money. There's a whole road of different avenues that you've got to go down to be able to actually turn a fixed asset into some cash. That's why we keep it nice and separate at the top there. The next one is supposed to be current assets. And the idea here is that these are the assets that we've got that should be pretty quick and easy to be able to turn from whatever the asset is to a particular form of cash. So straight away, we've already talked about this one in the last one. Cash at bank in hand. Well, that's the easiest one to turn into cash. It already is cash. The two above that, though, is debtors. It's basically how much money is owed to you as a business. So if you do some business and you've got some money that's owed to you, they're going to be classed as debtors. Stocks is going to be items that you've purchased but haven't yet actually sold. And stocks are important to you because you want to be able to showcase that you may have invested quite a lot of money in previous years, but you haven't realized the actual profit on these yet. And they should be sat there waiting to be taking the profit. And if you think about it, the total there should represent quick and easy ways in which you can convert something from an item on the balance sheet to cash. Both of them do have notes next to them and we're going to see that those notes in a moment. But again, looking at those previous years, that's going to give us an indication. And then what happens there is we have what's called our creditors. Now our creditors there are money that we owe to other people. So that's going to be things like our tax bills, maybe trade creditors as in people that we have bought items off that we're going to then receive and pay for at a later date. And obviously creditors is negative to what's actually our debtors position is going to be. And this then gives us our net asset figure just here. Now the idea of our net asset figure is to try and give us a position that if we were to liquidate all of those assets, so this fixed asset, those debtors and those creditors, what position are we at? Are we in a position where we still have positive cash or would we be in a position where what's classed as being insolvent and have negative cash? Now there are our current, what we call current liabilities and current assets. So the quick and easy ones. The items below that line should really represent not so current ones. So things that could take more than one year. If it's going to be items that can take more than one year, then we show them separately to try not to skew with the figures above there. So in this case, we've got this one item here, this liability quite small in this one, £510, but we don't expect that to realise in the next year. That's a long term debt that we've got to worry about. So we've got to be able to make sure that over a past year, we can afford to pay for that as well. That then gives us that net asset figure. Our net asset figure is split into two areas. 
should have been in the last one to be honest we've got the amount of money that is available to our shareholders to pay out as dividends and the amount of money that we have issued as equity equity is how many shares we've issued and what that's related to again these two numbers here should both match if they don't match we've done something fundamentally wrong so the balance sheet at the moment is telling me that if i was to sell everything that i had and liquidate it all to cash then at that point i should have a 118 000 odd pounds worth of shareholder funds which in theory i should be able to push to the bank to push the shareholder i'm actually in a better position here than i thought because actually if i wanted to pay out my shareholders i could pay up to 118,000, I have 186,000 pound in my bank. So it seems like I'm in a good position. Don't be fooled though, because in this particular case, I do have almost 200K worth of creditors that I probably want to settle before I go out there and actually pay money to my shareholders. Now we noticed those notes, so let's just go through the notes that are relevant to us. Number six was our tangible fixed assets. That's giving me a breakdown of what that £11,000 relates to. Well, actually, it's 11000 of cars, 10000 of fixture and fittings, and I did actually invest a little bit in the year, £1,200 in computer equipment, whereas I had £6,000 brought forward. This figure below the line, that's how much we've paid for our assets. The figure below the line is how much we've actually spent put into our profit and loss account. Remember, we're trying to spread those assets over multiple years. Well, this is how much we've spread. Take one away from the other, that's how much we've still got to show on our profit and loss account. In theory, that should be what the value of those assets would be. We'll never be that quite that case, but that's what we're trying to achieve with this. Stocks figure, well, that was just purely stocks. That makes that nice and easy. But our debtors figure was 10,000 pound of what I would call trade debtors. And what trade debtors are is basically you buy money you still receive for services and goods that you need to pay for and then you can see here got a bit of prepayment possibly corporation tax if you're due to a refund or some other debtors and in this case other debtors just relates to debtors that we know we're going to receive cash for at a later date so in this case it could be anything from a rent refund or whatever it's going to be then we got the other note which trade creditors and then it'll break that down for us so we can see what that means we've got our in this case our group undertaken so in this case we own or we have money owed to our group company we've got some trade creditors there we've got some directors current account there which is money owed to the directors and we've got VAT as well and other taxes will be shown there as needed and then finally it shows us how that profit and loss figure is brought in now we have the money that was brought forward from the previous year so 95k next year we're going to have 118,000 pounds sent over and then that leaves us with this figure here our profit for the year and that is what we have on our profit and loss account and that's in the next video so there we have it that is a breakdown of the balance sheet trying to give you some understanding but ultimately the balance sheet should be that whatever date is it that your year end comes to you should be able to put a line through that date and that date then should be able to show how much money your business is effectively worth if you're going to sell it at that point technically how much is it worth if you're going to liquidate everything how much cash will you have available and then ultimately how much you could pay then to your shareholders the balance sheet is so important to the clients, that's actually what we sign off when I sign our accounts. So it's really important for us that we make sure we're happy with all of those numbers on there. Every number I've just gone through there, as an accountant, we want to be making sure we can justify each one. How much money in your bank account? Easy, isn't it? That's how much money is in your bank itself. And then we've got the ability then to go through the other aspects as well. Stock, can we actually see how much stock is available? Debtors, how likely are those debtors going to get paid? and creditors, how much money we, you as a company may owe to other people. They're the sort of things that we want to be making sure spot on so that we can ensure that your balance sheet is correct. What did you think to that video? Let us know in the comments below if there's anything we've missed or if there's anything else you want us to go through in a little bit more detail and if there's anything else that you need to understand about your balance sheet. My name's been Adam Patrick. This video has been an absolute pleasure to do for you. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share pass on all that sort of stuff to make sure more people understand what their balance sheet is in their financial statements my name has been Alan patrick as always been a pleasure to do this video for you and i will see you in the next video bye for now